If you are one of these people that has a closet full of clothes, but you feel like you have nothing to wear, you're just shopping, but you're not feeling like you're getting better style from those purchases, this video is for you. I've been doing this for a long, long time. Recently, I had a mindset shift a little bit. I did not have an awakening. Do not worry. We're not talking about quitting luxury fashion. We are, however, talking about being more mindful about our approach to shopping. This will be a chatty video. Welcome back to my channel. I am just in the most chatty of moods today. I'm sipping on a little matcha latte. It's a rainy Sunday here in Sweden. So may I advise you to sit back, relax, grab a little beverage, cheers, and let's just chat about this topic, shall we? I think most of us have an abundance of clothing. We usually just bring out like 10 to 20% of the things, wear that on repeat, wear whatever's on the chair or whatever is in our little floor drobe that we've created. You don't really look at what's in your wardrobe because you already know like, okay, I can wear those Uniqlo blue slacks because that is what I wore yesterday and then you just wear that for weeks on end until you realize, okay, I need to wash them. And now you're like, oh my gosh, what am I wearing? I think that's a lot of us. I think especially for us people who have a lot to do, we have actual jobs to go to. We cannot spend the entire day of thinking of what to wear for the next kind of Instagram photo, you know? I think a lot of us on the internet, like when we are thinking of elevating our style, we run into the advice of shopping where with a wish list, right? I think shopping with a wish list is super useful, super helpful. But I think if you go about wish listing in the wrong way, it can just be as harmful as just mindlessly shopping. Hear me out. When we look at our wish list in terms of, I want that item because this item is trendy. I want that item because I saw that item on my favorite influencer. I think seeing it and swiping up on the Insta story or popping over to the TikTok shop and just adding it to your cart and having it ship to you for like next day delivery. It's super easy. The friction is too low. I think it is healthy to have a wish list to think about stuff for a while before you just mindlessly buy something. Because in my opinion, the purpose of buying new clothing should be to create better style right? Or experimenting with your style or wherever you are in your style journey. I think shopping for items shouldn't be like a mindless activity. It should have a general purpose. This sounds like I'm, I'm selling you on some sort of, I don't know, major change in your life. I promise it's not that deep. <laughs> Stay with me. I had a change in my mindset a few months ago. I've been sitting on this list of notes in my phone for quite a while. It's a, it's a lengthy note, but essentially, I will break it down to you. The main thing here is that we need to change our minds from shopping for that item to shopping for style opportunities. This little change in how I view style has completely changed my approach to what I'm wearing and how I'm curating things to my wardrobe. And if you're someone who's working with a wish list, then I think everything in this change will start with your wish list, right? Let me give you an example, actually, because essentially, when I look myself in the mirror and I've put on an outfit, I've thought so many times, like, I need a navy blue handbag that I can wear crossbody. That would look so good with this outfit. Since I'm a luxury girly, I guess you could call it, I immediately put a navy blue, like Kelly 20 or 25 on my wish list. That is clearly a beautiful bag. It's, it's one of those items that I would love to own, but it's not really an approachable item to just add to the wish list and just easily curate, you know? And I think what you have in your wish list doesn't have to be easy to buy, but equally for me currently, buying a navy blue Kelly is just aspirational. I'm not trying to create purchase history at Hermes. I'm not really looking truly to buy an Hermes Kelly bag at the pre-loved market, unless I stumble across a great deal, but great deals for Hermes Kelly bags in 20 or 25 are not easy to come by. Right. On my wish list, I've had this navy blue Hermes Kelly for such a long time. I've not stumbled across a good deal in several years. I had a little moment of, oh my gosh, I am stupid. 
<laughs> when I was in Italy. I was essentially in a little fabulous vintage shop with one of my friends. We were perusing through this vintage shop. We both saw this bag and my friend was like, oh my gosh, that bag is totally your style, Amanda. I was like, yes, that is so cute. That is exactly what I have on my wish list, right? It's a little navy blue bag. It has a shoulder strap so that I can wear it cross body. It is, you know, in a chic little style. It's vintage, it's all leather, it's just everything. And I was like, well, that would be a great bag in my collection, but I kind of want the Hermes Kelly, you know, in navy blue, and I, I don't really want anything else. And she was like, why? That bag is literally your style. Like I tried it on, it even matched my outfit that day. It was 180 euros. And then she was like, what's, what's, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and I, I think she's totally right. I think when you focus on buying whatever everyone else is wearing and essentially just curating that item that you've seen on influencers, that you've seen online, that you've seen this is the best bag for you to buy and then you just have that on your wish list mindlessly without even thinking, are there other bags that I could potentially do the same job with, right? I think then we have boxed ourselves in a little bit too much and I think it's it's healthy to broaden our approach, right? So what I think should have been on my wish list instead of that Hermes Kelly in navy blue with palladium or gold hardware, I think I should have had a navy blue crossbody bag in all leather because I prefer to have leather bags. Gold or silver hardware, I wasn't totally fussed with. I wanted it to have little feet. This has little feet. I wanted it preferably to be vintage. This is vintage. And I wanted it to be one of those bags that it's big enough for me to fit like my essentials, but I want it to like not be a huge bag, right? I wouldn't want like a Kelly 35 because that would be too big for what I was envisioning as kind of a little crossbody bag in navy blue to go with my navy blue outfits, right? Does that make sense? Because this essentially, I bought it and I'm so happy that I bought it because I'm wearing it so much. I've gotten so many compliments. People are like, oh my gosh, that bag is so chic. What brand is it? And when I tell them, that it's not even a luxury brand. They're like, oh my gosh, amazing, fabulous. Can I buy one too? And I'm like, it's vintage. I bought it in Italy, but you can go scroll whatever is your favorite pre-loved website because this is a Luciano Soprani bag, essentially. It's one of those brands that I didn't know existed before I bought this one, but since then I've like low-key scrolled a little bit on my favorite pre-loved websites and I've seen some other little chic bags of this brand. Would I have had an open mind to this earlier? I could have had a little navy blue bag in my collection that I could have worn so much, but I was just boxing myself in and only thinking about that Hermes Kelly. So essentially, when you have those moments, right? You stand in front of the mirror, you're thinking, oh my gosh, this outfit would look so great with a white t-shirt. This outfit would look so great with a pair of black classic loafers. This outfit will look so great with, I don't know, an orange blazer, like whatever you have in mind. Think about that in terms of not just thinking like, oh my gosh, I saw that on my favorite influencer the other day. Let's just go see what brand she bought and buy that. You know, think about it in terms of what am I lacking in my wardrobe? What is the missed style opportunity here? Can I recreate this with something I already have in my wardrobe? For me, with the case of the navy blue bag, I did not have a navy blue bag in my collection. I didn't even have like a little crossbody bag that could, you know, go well with the outfits that I was thinking, right? So I truly felt like I had a gap in my wardrobe. I was missing out on that style opportunity, right, of pairing those outfits with a navy blue bag and just looking fabulous. <laughs> So what I'm trying to say, I think buying that item, you know, whether that's something that's super trendy right now, or whether that's something that you just saw on someone's TikTok shop and you just immediately bought it, right? Buying that item, I'm not really convinced that that will equal to having better style, right? Whether that item is something that's super trendy right now or something that you saw on your favorite influencer, or something that you just saw someone on the street and just asked, hey, where's this from? They're like, oh my gosh, it's from H&M. Then you just run over to H&M without thinking of how will I use this in my wardrobe, you know? 
Now, I am partial in this topic because I'm not really one of those people that likes to follow trends all that much. I would prefer to just try to focus on my personal style and curate things that I feel like I will want to wear for a long time. I think that is essentially the kind of divider here. If you're someone who loves to follow trends and you want to be on trend every season, then this video is probably not for you. But if you're someone who is kind of trying to elevate your personal style, you're trying to curate your luxury collection, or it doesn't even have to be luxury, but on this channel, we are kind of luxury prone, I guess, in terms of what we're buying. But if you're trying to curate that perfect collection of items for you, right, then I think this video is super helpful helpful because even if we curate the like perfect items to our wish lists if we don't have a plan for how to incorporate those things into our daily style right and what we wear on kind of a weekly or monthly or whatever basis you feel like is reasonable for you then I think we're just buying more things and we're not even creating better style because we're buying things you know we're just stacking things <laughs> in our wardrobe without even looking at them and especially if, like I said, you have an abundance of items already, dare I say, it's better to stop, drop, think about if it's actually worth buying before you just add it to your wish list and you're like, oh my gosh, I need a black Birkin, but actually, do you really need a black Birkin? Or do you just want a black handbag that's an all leather that you can use like easily and you don't have to worry about like does it get destroyed in the rain you know <laughs> and I'm not perfect either I think leaning into a trend once in a while can be super fun I think trends are a tool to keep your wardrobe feeling fresh and to keep yourself inspired about personal style I think viewing trends in that way is great I think buying that item because it's all that currently in the fashion space like the green dress everyone knows the green dress, right? Everyone bought the green dress. Some people even saved up money to buy the green dress. By the time it arrived in the like actual post, like the trend was out. I think that is such a, I was gonna say sad, but such an unfortunate way to view style because essentially when you're buying the item that is all that currently, it will not be all that for so long, you know? The mood will pass, the trends will move on. If you buy that specific item and you wear it later, chances are you will or you might feel a little bit dated when you wear it. You might feel like, oh my gosh, this is maybe not my personal style anymore. Maybe I just bought it because of the trend. But if you really like a trend, if you want to buy into it, think about, okay, what about this trend do I actually like? Maybe it's the fact that it's looking a little bit coastal, like the coastal grandma. Everyone was talking about coastal grandma or the quiet luxury or whatever. What do you actually like about quiet luxury? Maybe you don't need the Roe Margot bag just because everyone has the Roe Margot bag. Maybe you even have something in your wardrobe that could serve the same purpose, right? If you view it in a way of what do I like about this trend? About the quiet luxury trend, right? I liked that it was simple outfits that essentially you could wear anytime for any occasion. They focused on neutral items, which I adore. Essentially, you view it as, okay, these are the archetypes of style that I'm looking for in that specific outfit. And that is what I want to recreate first. Look, if you have something like that in your wardrobe, if you need to add it to the wish list, don't add Laura Piana cap because I saw it in succession, right? Maybe add, I want a neutral cap. I want it to be in wool or cotton or whatever caps are in the type of material, you know? And then you go browse literally whatever is your favorite. If you want to shop pre-loved or if you want to shop at, I don't know, maybe you want to shop at Laura Piana. Maybe you want to shop at Massimo Duty. Maybe you want to shop at Uniqlo. Maybe you want to shop with Brooks Brothers. Like whatever is your vibe, go there. Don't just swipe up in a TikTok shop and be like, oh my gosh, my favorite influencer is wearing this, so I'm gonna buy that, you know? Does that make sense? Because when your favorite influencer is moving on from that item, which, spoiler alert, they probably will quicker than you want to think about it, then maybe you will feel uncool when you're wearing that specific item, but when you went about it in shopping for the thing that kind of leans into that aesthetic or that style or that kind of archetype of clothing item, then likely you've thought about it in a way of, okay, this will fit my style because I like that navy blue blazer and I want it in a, 
I don't know, maybe you want it in a more boxy cut than they were wearing in Succession. Or maybe you want it in a little bit more of a, I don't know, informal style or whatever you want, right? Think about it in what way would I want to style this item and then buy that item that you find that is perfect for your style but also leans into that style narrative right or trend or whatever you want to call it so essentially what i've done right to create better style for myself is to stop thinking about buying that specific item right that i see on someone or that i have it in my mind that you have to buy a Kelly instead of buying like an actual just normal handbag, right? I think stepping away from buying that item to focusing on what style opportunities am I missing in my wardrobe? What kind of archetypes of items do I want to add to my wardrobe? And then adding that, right? So making it a broader kind of wish list item, but being focused on what are you missing in your wardrobe currently? So essentially, instead of shopping for items, we're shopping for style opportunities. Does that make sense? I hope so. This has required a lot of mental gymnastics, I'm not gonna lie, which is why I'm happy to be partnering with Magic Mind on this video. Magic Mind is a longtime friend of this channel. You guys know, I adore their little matcha-based drinks. I think these are a brilliant alternative to coffee, you guys know. I am a coffee addict. Like in any video you see from me, I'm sipping on a little coffee. Now, I've been on a little bit of a health kick recently. Like I had a cold for so long. And then when that cold finally ended, I started moving more. I started focusing more on my skincare. I started focusing more on the like health of my hair. I also started decreasing my coffee consumption. And when doing that, sipping on something like a little Magic Mind matcha latte is brilliant. Now, am I becoming a matcha girly? I'm sure trying to, but I'm still having coffees. Like I'm not gonna lie. But these are a brilliant alternative and these give me such like focused energy. I'm one of these people I struggle to focus like if something distracts me then I completely forget what I was doing or what I was saying or like where my train of thought was going right <laughs> but with these I feel like I've increased my ability to focus I brought one over just to show you in terms of these little drinks they come in these cute little bottles do you see this like the attention to little design is so cute you just shake it up a little bit. I personally drink like half of one of these per day. They come in like a little trial pack of three. They also come in 15 and 30 packs, right? So for me, a 15 pack is a month consumption because I, like I said, take half of them. So I take half of a little Magic Mind. I take a little oat milk in my glass I mix it until it becomes a little cute vibe and then I just drink it. It's the simplest matcha latte ever. I don't need to bring like a little pack of matcha and you know, a little whisk and do the whole thing. No, you just pour a little bit of this in a glass. You take a little bit of oat milk and then you have a matcha latte. It's the best. Like I said, this has matcha. It has some turmeric. It has like some ingredients to make you both focused it makes you stress less it makes you have like a cleaner streak of energy which is honestly all i need i have gotten a little special discount code for you because i wanted you guys to have the opportunity to try these for free right so if you use my code seedler trial you will get a pack of three which is essentially enough for six days right because if you want to do like me and you use half of them a day then you have basically a week of a trial from yours truly. So use my code Seedler Trial, and then you get a three pack for free. Essentially, I will link the little code in my description box. If you uh, feel like trying out Magic Mind, then cheers. And thank you Magic Mind for partnering with me once again on a video. So in conclusion, shifting my mindset from shopping for that item, right, to instead trying to create new style opportunities for myself has been upgrading my style so much. I feel like it's given me this tool to kind of be more 
mindful and create more of a, do you want to call it polished style? Maybe not. Maybe a more cohesive style, right? I feel like I'm shopping for those items that I really feel are missing in my wardrobe rather than just mindlessly scrolling and being like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that is so cute, you know? So if you, like me, have so many items in your wardrobe already and you're not really thinking of, oh my gosh, can I create new cool outfits with what I have, but instead just re-wear whatever you were wearing yesterday. I mean, that is literally what I do a lot of the time, right? What is the point of having a bunch of clothes if we're not actually wearing them? If you resonate with this topic, I hope this gave you a little bit of inspiration of how to improve your style, right? In terms of that mindset shift of shopping for items to shopping for style opportunities. Thank you so much for chatting with me today and spending this time and space with me. I will link another video right here in case you've not already seen it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. I will see you back here next Sunday at 3 p.m. Swedish time. And until then, stay safe, take care, and I will see you soon. Bye.